Rabba Voshit Prada Bayete. In the Rabba Voshan de Bayeda. A blessed morning, everyone. Once again, I want to welcome you to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. Wherever you are this morning, I want to welcome you to join us. We believe God for great things this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is really doing a new thing in our life. I don't know about you, but if you're fasting and you're seeking the face of God in this season and time, you're pressing into, amen, the intentions of God and the counsels of God, I want you to, amen, take heart, rejoice, and in fact, ce celebrate because the Lord, amen, yes, is doing a new thing within our life, within our space, within our spirit, man, and it has to be clear to us, amen, whatever we engage or whenever we engage in the things of the spirit, it has to to be clear to us that indeed we are investing amen into into a life amen that will forever give to us once again let me let me welcome everyone thank you uh, my dear sister priscilla thank you a blessed morning to you and your family i hope you're still enjoying joanna's book thank you god bless you welcome this morning any other person joining us wherever you're joining from this morning i want to amen once again invite you to you know to to to, to journey with us uh, before we go further this morning in that which the spirit of the lord amen as uh, uh, laid upon my heart as we continue of course in this uh, uh, um, emphasis of spiritual fitness training our spirit let me just you know uh, uh, read uh, something from one of my materials that uh, we, we put out you know some time ago and i remember quoting it again in the latest material on the on, the, on you know on the uh, um on fasting and the acceleration of the church and I, I, I want to read that because it, it gives us amen, a perspective it gives us a framework amen to what God is doing in our day or to where we are and how we show amen how we should apply our heart amen to what the, the the Lord is saying to us here's the word it says just as a new season in the earth births a new a new pace a new speed, a new pace uh, of focus or innovation and technology that advances and accelerate the socio-economic realities of the day. New seasons in the spirit also require advanced prophetic, quote-unquote, amen, creative strat you know, strategies and technology in the construction and the establishment of of the kingdom of God upon the earth. Now, uh, maybe I should read this again, then I'll give you a, a kind of, you know, an explanation why I'm quoting this. I said, just as new season in the earth, but, amen, new pace, new focus, innovations, and technology that advances and accelerate the socioeconomic realities of the day. New spiritual season also requires advanced prophetic strategy. And technology in the reconstruction and the establishment of amen, the kingdom of God in the earth. Now, what what am I trying to say? Basically, I'm saying right, that when we when we when we are faced with a new spiritual season, when we find ourselves in a new spiritual topography, we we find ourselves in a dimension of a life where God has brought us, amen, into a new day. We have to understand the requirement. We have to understand, amen, the kind of, if you will, the kind of uh, uh, spiritual attitude, the kind of behavioral lifestyle you know we talk about kingdom culture we have to understand amen the the, the 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 culture 
the values. Amen. Yes, we are, we, are, we are Christians. Yes, we are saved. But even in that salvation, in our redemption, as we journey with God, they bring us into amen, new realities. They bring us into a new environment that requires that we know how to engage that environment and often for us to be able to do that amen we will require amen to move further to press further in god to inquire hallelujah of the lord and to do that we need amen uh, 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 you know you know values of fast amen we need to fast we need to pray we need to go beyond just amen the former position or the former uh, 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 sphere that you know we find ourselves amen yes that's how we journey in the things of the spirit and i'm saying this once again to kind of you know reemphasize and reestablish the the reason why god is speaking to us in the way that he's speaking to us that in this day that we have been brought into amen we need to de- develop our spirit again and to do that means that we have to of course yield ourselves surrender ourselves amen we have to lay again on the altar i know you did that yesterday i know you did that amen uh, uh, last month last week amen last year amen in the past season but every season as it unfolds require a new set of commitment and to, for us to be committed amen we have to be tracking the heart of god we have to understand amen the burden of the law we must understand amen the heartbeat of god for that season or else amen we're gonna find ourselves you know either you know living in the shadow of the past amen yes just celebrating and 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 keeping ourselves amen in, in the achievements of the past like i said it's not enough for us to be able to break through into new season and celebrate amen yes the success of a new day we have to also understand how to maintain amen our you know you know our 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 if you will our involvement in the things of god in the activities of the spirit so that amen we 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 we, we are not drum back amen we are not put in a situation where we are not you know we're not responding to the present amen speakings of god there is a present truth that is coming from the presence of god and these are some of the things that we are talking about and i'm hoping that those of us amen that are paying attentive you know hearing so the things that we're saying will understand amen that which the lord amen is saying this these are days these are the time where heaven is calling us amen once again to enter into the gym of the spirit hallelujah they are calling us to step into a dimension of a life hallelujah in in our obedience amen in our submission in our yieldedness amen to to the voice of god they are calling us hallelujah to to once again you know uh, uh, you know if you will revamp amen our you know our our What's the word that I'm looking for? You know, our lamps. Yes, we have to tweak our lamp. Amen. We have to trim our lamps. Amen. We must know that we have enough oil. We have, amen, enough, if you will, enough energy enough tenacity in the spirit we 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 have enough motivation amen we have enough mo- you know uh, uh, inspiration of the spirit amen all of the th- all of the things that i'm saying basically a language and this language has to be clear in terms of their meaning in the spirit so that we don't lose our focus we can be caught in something we call ministry we can be caught in something we call you know life domestic life we can be caught in something we call business all right we can be caught amen in pursuing all kinds of things amen and the day of the lord the the the, the voice of god the the speakings of god the comings of god you know misses us so we want to be amen as 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 them amen who who are ready who are prepared who are fit amen as a fed as they say we want to understand amen what is the requirement of the lord because these are the people this quality of people are those that the lord will be you know transacting with those are the people the lord will be investing amen his heart his desire his intention hallelujah regarding amen even their immediate family regarding their community all right the lord will never place amen you know something that is of kingdom value into somebody that amen is not really seeking it's not you know yearning it's not pressing into it's not making a demand amen you are not burning the bridge of yesterday and say god let's go further into new you know new territories hallelujah new frontiers all right we have to we have to wear the right mindset because it's that mindset that allow us to build the kind of if you will the kind of you know fitness the kind of skill amen the kind of spiritual you know you know life that that is required because you like it or not we are all tools in the hand of god and god will use us to the degree amen yes that we are prepared 
God will use us to the degree that we are prepared. Like we know that, all right, in the concept of, you know, uh, 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 you know, those who serve at the, you know, in the temple, all right, the priests and the Levites, there are those, all right, that in their service, they can go beyond certain levels, certain position. You understand? Yes, the Levite, they have their, you know, limitation, all right, and those who are actually the priest, amen, there are, there are, there are demand, amen, there are standard for them, amen, in order to be able to enter into the holies of holy, they must be fit, they must be spiritually trained, they must be spiritually equipped, they must be spiritually ready, amen, yes, because of the responsibility that is laid upon their shoulder, the Bible talk about this priest, amen, yes, bearing, yes, the burden of the nation, amen, through the symbolic, you understand, uh, 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 fitting of, of the stones, you know, six stones, on, on, on the left on the left shoulder hallelujah, of the priest inscribed amen on you know on this cloth they wear yes and on their shirt 12 stones amen that tells the, the kind of burden the kind of you know capacity and competence in the spirit that is required for us amen to stand and, and reflect you know the responsibility of God for our day so these are the things that heaven amen is impressing upon my heart at least let me start with myself, all right? When we, when, when we begin to look into, you know, the nature of the days that we have been brought into, all right? Looking into the nature of the days, amen, really uh, will not will not give us a lot of you know insight if we're just basically looking at the natural if we're looking at you know what, what we're hearing the sound bites from the tv and you know social media and all of that yeah sometimes we're like oh, oh yeah yeah but but if you really want to know what is going on you have to be in the spirit because amen god speaks to us via the spirit and if our spirit man is not alive is not equipped like the bible says amen they, they are dull of hearing if we're dull of hearing how do do we get ourselves, amen, ready and prepared? There's a scripture we have been sharing, you know, I, I've been basically not, well, not talking about, but I've been flagging the scripture, all right? And, and let me just quickly flag it again, all right? The scripture says, if the trumpet makes, amen, an uncertain sound, who will be prepared for war? There has to be that sense of understanding and preparation. I'm just quickly, you know, trying to look for look for it. But anyhow, I don't want to be distracted, you know, uh, with, with that. Because it's important that we are ready, that we are fit, amen, that we understand the demand of God for our day, that we understand the requirement of the Lord for our time, amen, so that we can give to God all that he requires. We can present to him, amen, all that, amen, is needed, and this is why we are emphasizing on the issue, amen, of spiritual fitness. Of spiritual fitness. Let me go into some of the points that all right, we have we have made. Okay, let's let's look at I think I should start from here. Now let, let me start from here. Okay, let's start from here. I said, do you not know? First Corinthians 9. We've read this, but I quickly want to read it again. I says, it says, do you not know that in a race, remember that when you're reading scripture, okay, you have to first, amen, be able to interpret what you are reading, amen, first to your spiritual state. Before you begin to apply to or uh, uh, how to get money, how to get your car, how to buy your house, how to, you know, because we are very, you know, quick, all right, to take scripture and just slump it on, you know, our, you know, material needs. Those material needs are important. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying, and I will never say, amen, they are not important, but I'm saying in the order of priority, when God speaks to us, first he's speaking to our spiritual condition. Because if we don't get the right interpretation in regards to what God is saying, all right, our focus, our focus will be diverted. Our focus will be misguided. And that is the problem that we have today in the church. Many times we go to church, we hear the word of God. Amen. In fact, men of God, most times they use the right message. But amen, the focus is what amen, is wrong. The focus is what is wrong. Where we focus our attention is where the problem is, okay? And that's where we continue to make mistakes, all right? Because when God speaks to us, first of all, he's speaking to a spiritual state. He's speaking to himself in us, amen? Because God is a spirit, amen? So when he's speaking, you will naturally, you know, you know, believe and accept that he's speaking to your spiritual state. And it's for this reason why, in fact, many people, you know, cannot hear God and cannot really pick what God is saying spiritually. Of course, because they are spiritually dead. 
because they are spiritually weak because they are spiritual spiritually famished amen they, they they are not in a state in a position where you know they, they can hear amen and run with what god is saying even when god is speaking to them all right their interpretation is something else they say god was speaking they say he turned us all right god was speaking to you know to you know to you know somebody like samuel okay that that's a very good example amen to show us that we need to grow spiritually god was speaking samuel could hear god but samuel could not amen understand nor interpret what god was saying he had to run to amen yes his father in the lord <laughs> he had to run to you know yes to eli i'm hearing are you calling me sir eli said i'm not calling you go back to son go back to sleep my son he where god called him again <laughs> you would have talked that amen god would have come in a different way maybe god will have just slapped him on the face you know pat him on the back or something god called him again samuel you understand god is not going to change his method amen of speaking to us particularly when we have been brought into amen a day where we are demanded we are required amen to mature they say when you are to be teachers amen you still need men to teach you the elementary aspects of the things of the spirit there are many things God wants to speak to us. Jesus said, there are many things I want to say to you. He said, but you can't bear them now. You are dull of hearing. Even if I speak these things, you will not understand because you have not grown. You are not mature. You are carried away by all kinds of things. And this is my own problem. When I, when I look at some of the things that some of our men of God, you know, I, you know, the emphasis, I'm like, but you are, pour, it's like you're pouring water in a basket. The people, amen, have not grown. They have not developed their spiritual life amen is still very far away from amen the scripture you are giving to them in fact the scripture that you're giving to them they just they just shake it and throw it away if it's good for them to make money oh that's good but if if it makes a demand for them all right to press in to wait on god 21 days to seek the face of god and not because they're looking for money not because they want another contract but because they really want to understand amen the nature of the day they want to be responsible they want to be accountable they want to be amen men and women who are fit to stand on the wall hallelujah yes as watchmen you're calling them to you know to become you know the nehemiahs of their day who will amen through the grace and the capacity amen and the resource of heaven now begin to build amen walls that have been broken amen gates that has been burned down no they don't want to do that they want to become the next bill gate and there's nothing wrong in becoming the next bill gate if that is your calling <laughs> you understand the, you know, the, 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 the focus, the attention, amen, of the church is so far away, amen, from the point that can allow us, amen, to carry the responsibility of the 21st century. We cannot. You see, this point that I am emphasizing is very important because God had to, God had to slap me to wake up to realize that Isaiah, you have been given a responsibility. You have been placed, you've been given a responsibility, all right? And, and you cannot, amen, uh, uh, be, be abdicating your responsibility. Well, well, it's not my responsibility to do that. No, whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility, amen, is to stand and pray on behalf of, amen, the reformation, the transformation, the revival of the church. Like I said to you, that God spoke to me, you know, not too long ago, that there are waves coming in the spirit. And each of these waves, hallelujah, you know, carry a particular dimension, amen, of, of his coming, amen, of his presence in the earth. And I said, some of those waves that are coming, amen, are to bring revival to the church. Well, that's one word we don't like to use, particularly in the apostolic and those who are and the prophetic and all of that no uh, revive no 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 god said to me revival is coming because there are those who need revival in the church the god said to me there are reformations coming all right if you think god is done with reformation sorry no god is still coming all right and there will be waves and waves of reformation there will be waves and waves of healing hallelujah for us who think well let's not emphasize on healing no 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 there are still waves of healing coming because amen god is building a church a church is not just made up of one part you understand we have to understand yes there are emphasis yes there are there, there are priorities and that is why we need to understand the way god is speaking to us okay sometimes we will leave our own lane of what god is saying the things god wants you to carry and run with you will leave it and be fighting someone that god has assigned god has empowered god has mandated amen with um, with a mission now you step out of your own shoes amen and you're castigating you're frustrating the the next person who amen your work and I work or his work, amen, ought to complement the intentions of God. 
in our zeal, we may, we've made all kinds of mistakes, including me. I'm not shying away from the things I'm talking about. We've made all kinds of mistakes. We've said all kinds of things we're not supposed to say. But when we begin to grow and have a mature spiritual state, you see, those who are really fathers in the things of God, I'm not talking about all these men who call themselves father. You call me father. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those, hallelujah, who are the front, you know, at the forefront of what God is doing. Not father because of the number of men and women following you. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh, you better begin to understand. I'm talking about men, hallelujah, in the spirit, women in the spirit who have the ability to birth spiritual seasons. To carry, hallelujah, yes, the burden of God for the, you know, for their generation, for their season, hallelujah. Yes, people who have the womb, amen, yes, to receive the seed of God's intention, hallelujah, and the birth it. Nobody is even aware. You have your Anna, you have, hallelujah, your, you know, your, 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 your Simeon, those are fathers. You understand? They are at the gate, amen, yes, they are at the gate waiting for, amen, the consolation, praying into, amen, the seasons of God breaking forth barriers in the spirit opening channels amen so that the next generation can enter those are the people i'm talking about like i said a few days ago when you meet some of these people you just even push them back because they are you know they, they look like you know people that are nothing <laughs> many of them don't have the things that we you know the fig leaves that we have today covering ourselves all right trying to you know impress people you know you go into a meeting you have, you have to go with this set of class of cars just to prove to people that yes you have arrived sorry nobody recognizes you in the spirit you're not recognizing the spirit there are people recognizing the spirit they say paul we know amen <laughs> jesus we know you we, we don't know you we don't recognize you in the spirit that's what I'm talking about, amen. The issues that I'm talking about are issues, amen, of spiritual lifestyle. They are issues of spiritual realities, issues of, you know, spiritual authority, issues, you know. Our understanding and definition of spirituality has to change. Because, amen, we can be preaching what I call idealistic. We can be preaching the right thing, amen. But we are not giving God the journey, amen, to birth for that which we are declaring. Or You understand? Yes. These people draw near with me with their mouth, but their hearts, kandorobayada. It is the heart that the Lord engages with. Not your mouth. Your mouth basically is a channel of what the heart, amen, has established. So when your heart has not established anything and you are speaking, you are just spitting, you are spitting. You are not saying anything that carries weight. You are not saying things that can shift season, that can move people, amen, that can impose, that can depose, hallelujah, that can enthrone and dethrone. You're just a noise maker. So we have to understand the burden of God. You have to wake up and understand that where God amen, is today, hallelujah, requires that we, we trim our week, requires, amen, hallelujah, that we increase that week, that the lamp, amen, shines brighter. The path of the righteous man. The fact that you, you shine in past season does not mean that you are, you are relevant to give light in this season. You, to give light in this season, you have to enter into the day of a new life. It is, the, it, is the, it is the life of God. As we increase in the life of God, we also increase, amen, our illuminating power. As we increase in, in, in our walk with Christ, remember, the life of God is the reality of Christ. It's the reality of Christ that dwells in us. We know Christ in measure. So I said, do you not know that in a race, what race, spiritual race? I said, we, I, I said, yes, it was it two, yes, uh, two days ago. I said, we're in a race, but this race is not a competition with, you know, your brother, you know, uh, on the other side. No, it's not a race of churches. It's, it's not a competition about ministries because that's what we think when we, oh, no, th this is not a race with some government officials or some politicians. No, no, this race, hallelujah, is against ourselves. Is a race, amen, between the soul and the spirits. <laughs> If you make this race, you know, a kind of competition, you are going to lose and you will lose flat down. But Paul is borrowing this terminology to, sh to show something very uh, uh, cogent in the spirit. 
to explain something, amen, that we don't see. Because spiritual things, we can't see it. They have to demonstrate. They have to describe. Sometimes they have to paint a picture. Sometimes they have to, you know, bring, take us to a place. They have to use all kinds of things. You understand? As a prophet, I know what I'm talking about. Because that's how it is in the prophetic. They will use all kinds of things. They will use even your dreams. Amen. They will use situations, circumstances. Sometimes you don't even see it. You're just, you're just watching the movie. But you don't understand that through that movie, they are speaking to you. How many movies have I watched? And not even finishing the movie, I just got up and started weeping. I started crying. I went into prayer. God will use all kinds of means and ways to get your attention if you are caught up amen yes in the things that god is using amen to get your attention that is a become an idol oh shanda maybe i should repeat that again god will use all kinds of means and method to try to get your attention yes but if you are caught up you're not hearing what God is saying, but you're caught up. You're so caught up in the, in the things God is using to get your attention. That itself becomes an idol. Jesus is the pattern. Whatever they use, whatever they are saying, whatever, you know, whatever we preach, if Christ is not magnified, you're entering into a, a very dangerous, you know, realm. So, in a race, all runs, but only one receives the prize. Only one. Yes, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. You understand? Paul said, run in such a manner, run in such a way, amen, to gain the prize, to take the prize. So what is the manner? That's those are the things. See, this is how I think when I'm when, when I'm when I'm when I'm you know when I'm studying the Bible, you know, I probe the things that I'm reading, of course, probing now in, in a positive form. So he said, say, run in such a manner. What is the manner? In other words, I can run, but if I don't run in a particular way, if I can't run in a particular way, I, I may not win the prize. I may not beat amen, the soul. I may not amen, bring the soul under the authority and under the government of the spirit. Because that is not the responsibility of God. My, the responsibility of God is after I have cooperated with him in obedience. When my obedience is complete, amen. Yes, it gives me, he allow me, amen, to walk in the power that he has already given. The power is there. But if I'm not cooperating with God, amen, nothing is going to happen. You like it or not. Listen to me. Those of you watching me, you like it or not. You are either being governed by your soul or you are being driven by the spirits. And to be in between is what we call carnality. <laughs> carnality is when amen, we try to use spiritual principle amen, to run or to drive amen, fleshy things. We try to use, oh, you understand? Yes. We try to, excuse me, we try to merge our, our spiritual understanding, the little understanding we have, amen, and then we merge that, amen, with the power of the soul to try to drive things. That is what brings frustration. And I'm going to be sharing that. The, the, the little uh, uh, excerpt that I put, you understand, on my Facebook uh, 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 page, I don't know if you have seen it. If you have, if you have read it, then uh, that's something very important you need to note because it helps us. Friends, friends you have to get to the point in your life where you are tired of being ruled of being of being driven or being controlled by your soul life it is the soul amen that allow us that pushes us that sometimes that bully us amen to live a sinful life sin has been dealt with but you continue to struggle with, with this with sin because amen you are still being governed by the passions of the soul by the lifestyle of the soul it's an inheritance from the old Adamic nature. And the scripture says, reckon yourself to be dead with Christ. Let me not jump ahead, but are you following me? Are you following me? So he said, run in such a way to take the price. Then he went further. He says, everyone who competes, in other words, if you're competing in this race, in this game, amen, he says, they go into what? Into strict training these are language today that are almost strange amen to the culture of the church why amen daily they are being applied people in the secular world you understand yes 
People in Babylon understand this principle. I was using the guy, you know, uh, Houston Boat of uh, 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 the Caribbean guy. That uh, this guy not only has he beaten, you know, all the best, the best of the runners. He's beating himself. He's beating his own record. This is how good this guy is. If only this guy can take that same principle and apply it to his spiritual life. My word. This is how men of God who journey with God in the past think. The reason why they were able to finish well is because they had this mentality. Winning is a mentality. And when you win just because you want to get a prize, then you don't know the reason, hallelujah, for winning. Alright? Because tomorrow somebody is going to outdo you. But when you have a vision, you have a reason. That's why I tell people, you know, some of the people following us who are into business. I say, don't go into business because you want to make money. You have to have a reason bigger than a man making money. Because it is that reason that drives you and that unleashes the passion, the desire. That even when somebody wants to kill you, you are still going. Because you know that this is what you are being mandated. Money is a secondary thing. It will come naturally. Some of the things that I've been able to do in my life, all right, I didn't, I didn't have to go running to, me, to, you know, to look for money. No, no, no. I didn't have to go, you know, the few times that I tried calling XYZ to assist, nobody, nobody's interested. But God has given you something. They say, what do you have in your hand? So I just continue to focus on, on my calling. I continue to focus, amen, in the authenticity of my calling. I continue to do what, amen, yes, I've been mandated to do and I'm doing it the best. The best means I'm doing it with all of my heart. And God start touching people. God start touching people. One, two, three. One, two, three. I want you to assist my son. Listen, God, hallelujah, sees and he rewards our obedience and our commitment. There are things you'll be bothering about. There are things I'm bothering about. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You just go back to the same principle. You have to learn to perfect the act of your assignment. And your first assignment is to, is to build your spirit. You understand? Yes, Christ has given you, amen, the gift of salvation. The rest are no longer gifts. They are no longer free. You have to work it out. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The fear, hallelujah, is your obedience to, to realize that, hey, God is real, amen. He has given me salvation. Now I've got to uh, follow him. But you don't just follow him on a straw. They say you've got to take up your cross. Why do you need to take up take up your cross to follow Christ? Amen. To keep the flesh where it belongs. Or else the flesh, after some journey, after some, some trip, the flesh is going to take you back. How many people began the journey with God and quit by the wayside? Got distracted by, by sound bites. Got distracted, all right, by, you know, people's opinion got distracted by people's clapping when you are running you only have one focus and that's the price so somebody like me when i'm when i'm doing what i'm doing i'm I, well i'm i know that i'm ministering to people but i am not catch, i'm not captured or right, by opinions of men there will be those that will right, right now as i'm preaching there will be those that will be castigating me there will be those that will be saying all kinds of things there will be those all right who will be just you know be pushing me aside and there will, there will be those if they can stone me they will want to stone me if they if they can stone me if they can see me and stone me in fact there are those stoning me spiritually but guess what that does not distract me hallelujah I'm on a track. I want to win the prize. I'm not bothered. I'm not shaking. I'm not distracted. Our problem is we're too distracted in the gene of the spirit. We're distracted by pain. We're distracted sometimes because there's a there's a tear in the muscle. But go ask any athlete. They will tell you that they have learned to manage, amen, the distraction. Their the, the emotional distraction, amen, yes. 
there will be distraction sometimes amen, about material things. There'll be, in fact, there'll be distraction in your home front just because you want to press into the spirit of God. I mean, I've, I've once lived in a situation where I was told I'm praying too much. I'm, I'm making too much noise, you know, in the house. And I'm not talking about, you know, the house I'm living now, my know. But where I used to stay, when you want to go beyond, you, you see, if you are not challenged, if you are not challenged about amen, your, your, your focus, your vision to us, God's intention, then you are not doing something right. Let me repeat what I've said. If there's no challenge, there's no opposition, amen, there's no backlash, all right, you understand? Yes. Sometimes the challenge will come even from your own parents, from your father, from your mother. You understand? Yes. Will come from your wife, your husband, will come from your children. But if you get yourself distracted, the enemy is a master you know, strategy when it comes to distraction. It will use anything. It will use your neighbor. It will use your brother in the Lord. Paul spoke about that. As, as he was defending his, his, his apostolic ministry, he talked about all right, him being challenged and being distracted by strange brethren, their brethren, but they, because they cannot see and appreciate what God was using him to do, all right, uh -huh, they challenged him. Who was the greatest you know, distraction to, to, to the ministry of, of Moses? It was his own brother and sister. It was Aaron, hallelujah, and Miriam. <coughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? So, like I was saying, there will never be a convenient time to, to go on with God, to serve God, to please God, or to go on a fast. Well, I can't fast because, you see, I've got so many things to do. My children, my kids, and all of that. Listen to this. There will never be, if you ever think there's going to be a convenient time for you to do, things, to do the things of God, the way you want to do it, you lie. You have to create the time. You have to make the time. And that is what is called living sacrifice. God doesn't want dead sacrifice. Despite what you're going through, despite your condition, despite the challenges, despite the state of the nation, despite Alia, Eskom, you can't, there, there's no electricity here to read your Bible. You don't have you no know, whatever it is, is part of amen. God's program from for your life to train you and bring hallelujah the best out of you. What we, what's the best? The best is when the inner man rises. We don't want the inner man to remain on the inside. We want the inner man to rise up. To rise up like Deborah rose up in the day where men are not are, are nowhere to be found. Amen. To lead an army to war. A woman rose up. Come on. We want a Deborah spirit to rise up from within us. Hallelujah. And say, hey, let's go to war. Legalabo <laughs> Shambi Develando Bruno Moshimba. Are you with me? And I rise up. You rise up early in the morning and begin to call upon the name of the Lord like a generation called the Enos generation. In the days of Enos, scripture says, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Like in the day of Enoch. Hallelujah. Men began to, in fact, not men, him began to pioneer the concept of walking with God. And Enoch walk with God. It takes stamina. I've told us this. It takes stamina to walk with God. God said to Abraham, walk with me and be what? Perfect. The word perfect means be mature. Let your walk with me bring maturity into your life. Sometimes God will walk, uh, you understand, on certain paths you don't want to go. They say, Peter, a day is coming. You will be led to go to a place you don't want to go. Are you with me? If you're going to walk with God, you have to be spiritually ready. You have to be fit spiritually. If you're going to please God in your day, in your generation. Listen, listen. 
we always say, oh, every this generation is worse, you know, than the past generation. I, I, I bet you past generation also said the thing, the same thing about previous generation. Every generation always look like all right, they are the worst. They, they, they are the they are the baddest. <laughs> you understand? But when I look back and I look at through certain things Christians went through in the past. Hello, how many places, you know, today, you know, uh, 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 in, in the 21st century, you've seen Christians, you know, tied, tied outside, all right, just for their faith, they are born alive. I know that in some place that I come from, in the northern part of Nigeria, all right, we've seen what Boko Haram have done to people, bomb churches, kill people. Yes, people have been persecuted, but the kind of heinous persecution that the early church went through, that the Roman Catholic Church put, you know, you know, some of the, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, what they call them, you know, the early church through. Nobody in our generation, I, I don't think there will be any person that will be a such people who have stood, who challenged, hallelujah, yes, the, the, the lies and the deception, who, 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 who took charge of the cause of God's counsel for their time. The kind of things you just need to go read, you know, uh, 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 some, some, you know, you know, some books in history about the, you know, the Christian history or Christian persecution. I'm telling you. With the kind of you know uh, 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 mindset and you know uh, uh, if you will uh, idea that we have today about democracy and you know and human rights and all of that, nobody will be able to bear some of those things. How many of us can bear you know watching our children being thrown, all right, to the lion's den, being thrown, all right, to you know to the to the spot field, all right, only to be to to unleash lion on on humans. To unleash bears on humans to eat people life. When, when you begin to read about what Christian believers went through, amen, to, to maintain, to even in fact to preserve the Bible, to preserve the Bible. If you look at the kind of persecution the Roman Catholic Church really delved on the on the church of the Lord, the saints, the way they chop people's hand open for everybody to see, just to tell others that in case you want to follow these people, this is what is going to be your lot. This is how you're going to end. But guess what? Persecution is in fact is what motivates the apostolic Christians. If you want to be a man, a, a, you know, a true believer in this season, that's why we keep talking about apostolic. Apostolic basically means, amen, to, 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 to do things, amen, the way you have been sent. And you can't go, amen, running except you have been sent. You have to know him who sent you. The same people were afraid, who denied Jesus Christ. The same people, when they had an encounter, when they, the life of God rose in them, when they began to live via amen, the authority of heaven, they were not afraid. In fact, they ran to the persecution. They were willing to be jailed. When they were in jail, the Bible said they were rejoicing. Paul and Silas, amen, sang praise to God. The jailers had them, hallelujah. God, God came down and proved himself, hallelujah, in their midst. Until the jailer gave his life to Jesus. Talking about working with God and being fit. Are we fit for purpose? Many of us, all right, we understand what it means to, you know, yes, to train, to be in gym, to do, with, with gym to make money, with gym, all right, to, to look fit so that when we appear, you, you understand, you know, at, at, at that, you know, boardroom where, you know, that business will be sealed, you know, we have this confidence, confidence. Because we know that we have done our own work. Some of us, oh yeah, or, or, you know, we are mentally, at least to a certain level, we are mentally fit. Not completely. And the mind is very subtle. The mind will, sh the mind will show you and give you all you need. All right? But we we'll, we'll, but we'll still keep that dark spot, that dark part. We'll still keep it. You understand? That's why you see people, when they get to their office, they're, they're looking nice, looking well, smelling well. You know? Yes, you want to hug them and all of that. You understand? But, oh, if they open, if they only open, amen, yes, their mind, their life to you, you see what is on the inside. You'll see the rottenness on the inside. You want to run away. So we use perfume and we use our nice suit and we use our Rolex, you know, wristwatch and we use, our, you understand, our cars, you know, yes, we use all kinds of things to cover up, amen, the, the inner mess, the shame, amen, the rottenness on the inside. Come on, can I preach this morning?
were like the Pharisee who killed the prophets and yet dressed the tomb of the prophets. Because it's all about hypocrisy. It's all about what we can show. And this is why today the church is weak. Because the church has become a showbiz. A show business. It's become an entertainment. You see, entertainment, you've got to get every... Your choreography has to be right. You can't be involved, amen, in the business of entertainment and your choreography are not right. Your lightings are not right. Your sound is not right. Your, your microphone is giving problem. No, you're going to lose money. That's why all right, in the world, they have perfected the art of choreography. Our, our men of God, those of us called prophet, apostle, bishop, we are, we, we are all, amen, yes, playing a role. We're just playing a role, all right, that will be paid for. We've perfected the art of choreography. We've perfected the act of speaking. There are people who are paid, you know, lots of money just to speak. That is how cheap the minds of people is. Somebody comes and just say things to you. And because you love that person, you like the way the person speaks. You just like, you, you, you like the courage. You like the charisma. God gave us charisma. We've perfected it to build something for ourselves. All the gift God gave to you, you know how you have you have turned that gift, amen, and focus is objective for your own self. That's how far, how far we have gone. So we have forever focus. The same Pharisee who killed the prophet were the same one, all right, who, who buried the prophet and dressed their tomb. So if you don't have discernment, you won't see what is going on. You see, the reason why I can speak the way I'm speaking is because I've seen the end of what men call church. Because there's another order that God is building. There's another church, amen, that is represented on earth that very few people recognize. When you go to China, you will hardly see a church. But there is a church present, alive, vibrant, hallelujah, the underground church. When you go to Iran, hallelujah, there is a church that is vibrant, alive, advancing the cause of God. But when you go to America, they will tell you, oh, we are the church. We are the face of the church. You lie. You can only deceive them who want to be deceived. But we know where the true church are. We know who are the bearers and the carriers, hallelujah, of the name of Yahweh. We're going to continue to touch that thing. So don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't continue in something that you know, amen, is not pleasing unto God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, the meditation, amen, are your thought pattern. They are your thought pro process. They are the agendas that defines, yes, what you want to do with that thing that sounds good, but you know behind, you want to use it for something else. So run in such a way, Run in such a way that bring glory to God. There's a lot we need to deal with, friends. Look at this. I said the habitual practice that reinforces the nature of the old man is the number one and the most powerful means the enemy uses to hinder the new man from truly developing and transcending into the full re redeemed life in Christ. You cannot enter into the day where your spirit man gains the kind of light that God has ordained if you are shying away from dealing with issues of your soul. Because your real enemy is not the devil. Yes, the devil is there. But we understand that even from the very beginning in the garden, amen, for the enemy, you, you understand, to seek to truncate the agenda of God, amen, he had to engage the soul. Remember, God created man with free will. And God never regretted that because he said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. The image and the likeness of God, amen, are two expressions. One carries, amen, yes, a connection with God. The other, hallelujah, you know, can reflect that connection within the created realm, the natural, you know, uh, earthly realm. 
In other words, amen. God wants somebody that can that can reflect him, that can interface heaven and earth. God was interested in the earth. Why he was he interested in the earth? We don't know. But God created the earth and placed man there. Man earlier was placed on earth to represent, amen, and to carry out the bidding of God. So man has to be, amen, yes, a reflection of God, which, which means he must have a spirit, hallelujah. He must, hallelujah, have a soul and he must be able to be seen. He must be able to deal with things in the natural realm. So God didn't just create you know, a spirit floating in the air. <laughs> Are you getting it? So God cannot create a man in his own image without giving him free will. So you have a choice. I had a choice. And I will always have a choice. I was praying about something that has been troubling me for a long time. Yesterday, I was deep in prayer. And I said to God, you know God how this thing troubles my heart. This thing is a, is a thorn in my flesh. It, it troubles my heart. But Lord, I noticed that I've been praying about it. But I've not really truly spoken to you about it. You see, you can be praying about something. But, I, I, but you have not really engage God in the matter. So I just realized this. They say, sorry, sorry, Father. I've not really, really engaged. I've been standing on my own right and my position and what I know, you understand, is correct on this issue. And I can make decisions around this issue. And I'll be very okay with it. But I've gotten to the point, Lord, that I dare not do anything without your express permission. You see, I have the will Based on the word, and I will, I will be right, 100% right. But I said, Lord, I'm not going to do that. I'm asking you, you, to make the final decision about this issue. You see, that is what it means to come to a day where your spirit, your spirit comes alive. And as I was praying, it's like I was hearing God saying to me, Son, I will handle it in my own way, at my own time. I said, that's fine, Daddy. And I continue my prayer. That's why I said to you, in the place of prayer, it's not just the place where we slap God, amen, with our request. We also need to hear. We also need to, amen, know how to listen to the response of God about issues. You can stand on, you know, a point that is biblical, that is scriptural, but God may be saying something, amen, yes, different, because, amen, you are using the scripture out of context. What is the context? The context is the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The context is the will of God. Not because, well, the word of God says, and you're standing on what God says, but God says, but you're not even asking me of my approval about this thing yes my word says but you can't just take my word and use it without consulting me the word because the word can have you understand yes different opinion about certain things <clears throat> different opinion about amen certain things based on what they are trying to gain you know what based on what they are trying to establish in your life the same word that will say to somebody go hallelujah because in the context of what god is doing in the life of a person they say go the same word can tell you stay the same word can tell you go back and deal with certain things it's the same word but the way amen they are responding to you through that scripture differs because we are not all in the same situation i hope somebody gets that so you can't take the scripture because the enemy can use the scripture, amen, yes, to truncate your destiny. You take take the scripture, amen, you're quoting the scripture, amen, and you say, but this is what the Bible says. This is what God was. Yeah. The greatest deception is for you, amen, to take scripture out of the context of the will of God for your life. And you know when you do that, <clears throat> you know when you want to do something and get away with it. You look for scriptures, all right? That backs you up, but the Bible says, <laughs> but the Bible says, but that, the things of God don't work like that. The same word of God that somebody reads, 
that say now it's time for you to go now what is the goal you don't have the context of that goal you don't know the same word the same scripture you're reading same scripture somebody has taken that same scripture and you know uh, that word comes to you almost like negative no wait don't go There's a, there's a there's a there's a there's a chapter that I have added or right, to this material that I'm right that I'm writing on this same topic that I were doing. On this same topic, there's a guy in in Second Samuel 18. They call him Aimas. Aimas. Aye. The order of Aimas. Aimas. You understand? If you live in the order of Aimas, Aimas. You understand? This guy is a sprinter. He could run. He had stamina. We're talking about stamina. <laughs> This that, that that order is going to be amen, the balancing side of what I'm talking about. Now, this one has passed all of the things we're talking about. This guy is a is fit. You understand? This guy is a runner. This guy is 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 he's got stamina, he's got the skill, you understand? He's got you know the upgrade. He, he has done all those, you know, you know, upgrades, you know, course you do, you understand, in dealing with AI and all of that, and all the courses that you need to do in order to function function amen and advance in the 21st century you know uh, uh, global society he knows all of that you understand i must know all of that and he, i must is even influential he he knows david everybody know that i must is a runner when absalom die they're looking for somebody who can run but who also have the knowledge the wisdom of of how to break the the, the news to the king well, they rejected Aimas. Aimas said, no, I'm the best person. They said, sorry, you're not the best person. <laughs> we know you can run. <laughs> oh, Lord. We know you can run, Aimas. We know you're good. We know you have done your study. We know all of that. There's nobody that can beat you. But on this case, there is something that you are lacking. The Bible never really told us, you understand, why Joab rejected Amen. I must. But when you begin to read the context, you will see why Job, Job because when Job says, sorry, I must, you are not the one to go deliver the message. I must insisted. No, I will run. Let me run, Job. I must take the message to the king. Job said, my son, remember, Job is not just any kind of a person. Job is the is the chief commander. Job is the general of the entire army of David. The life of David is in the hand of Job. That's how powerful Job is. Aimas watch. Aimas witness how how Absalom, Amen, died. Aimas was there when Amen David was telling you know uh, Job, be careful how you deal with that boy, Absalom. It because David knew, amen, what Joab is going to do. <laughs> so the, everybody heard it. Ahimaaz was there when he heard the king say, This guy, you understand, is zealous, but he's foolish. He's not wise. In fact, he would have died. Joab would have killed him. But he's a young guy, zealous. I think Joab he thought, this. I can train this guy, you know. <laughs> This guy want to go with, with his ability. I can run. Yes, we've been talking about, all right, you know, being, being spiritually fit. We've been talking about, you understand, uh, 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 being, 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 being spiritually alive, all right. Oh, yes, now I am, I said, I've, I've passed through the course. I came out first. Why can't I run? I say, sorry. You don't know how to break news. You are you are you are you are zealous, but your zeal is not reflecting maturity. You are not the one. They say we want the Kushite. We want the the Kushite guy. Bring the Kushite. Yes, he, he can run, but it's not as good as I as I am as oh, this is a message. And, and I know listen, listen, all you men of God listening and watching me, don't go and carry this message and start blasting it in your in your poop because I know that's what we do. You understand? You've got to be tested, you've got to be tried because that's what we do. We look for sand bites. Message to preach on Sunday. You preach this one without you being tested and tried. Listen to this, you're gonna be bringing death into your camp. You better believe that's a word from the Lord. This is not the day to carry a word, to carry a gift and run. 
like the same mistake Aima is making. You've got to let the word of God try you. Are you the Aimas? You, man of God watching me. You, woman of God watching me. You into business, into career, whatever. You understand? Yes, because this message can be transmitted into every area of our life. I so when you're very good, you'll be hired. In fact, you will have to negotiate your price. But do you have a message? That's the word. Do you have a message? Aimas was not given a message, but he ran. And if you read that scripture, you will notice when this guy began to run, the scripture said he outran the Kushite, he outran the Ethiopia, he outran him. And when the watchman, the gatekeeper, saw a man, Aimas coming, the gatekeeper recognized. He said, the person coming. He was saying to the king, because they are waiting for, for news. They said, the person coming is running like Aima, so they know him. He's running like Aima. Then suddenly they saw another one coming. They said, but there's another person coming behind him. Aima got there first. And the king says, well, as, he's, as he was approaching the king, he began to sing the praise of the king. He bowed down before the king. May all your enemy, you know, all those who are sick in your life, may they perish. And the king is saying, is, it, is all well? Is my son alive? He's still asking him. Uh, then he began. He began the story. You see, uh, I, 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 was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was in the bush when I saw people trying to kill and fighting. And David said, shh, stay here. Woo! They shut him up. Aimas was shut up. David said, shh, you, you don't seem to have a message. I asked you a simple message. You see, he was trying to project himself. He was trying to gain favor. He was already popular, but he has not dealt with insecurity. There is still functionality within the skill. He's skillful, but he's projecting something in the skill that a mature person will pick all right, and will put him aside. You can't take this position. You're going to bring problem to our company. I'm going to bring problem to the ministry. Stay aside. I know you've got giftings. When the Kushite came, the Kushite gave the message. But Aimas outran him. Aimas outran him, but the message was given by the Kushite. The guy that Aimas looked down on. When Joab said, you cannot run. You know what Aima said? He said, let me run behind. Let me run behind the Kushite. Let me run behind him. Joab said, if you want to run, run. Go. Go. Go and disgrace yourself. Go help you if you don't die. But go. Aima saw what happened. Like That's why I told you. Because Aima, Joab knew what Aima was trying to do. He was trying to seek the favor of the king. You know, Joab could have killed him. Because Joab, amen, joined his men to kill Absalom. I think I must just stop here. I don't think I should go further. I think I've, I've hit a peak on this, on this morning's message. Because that is what, amen, yes, many of us are battling with. And that's why... I think we made the statement the habitual practice that reinforces the nature of the old man is the number one and the most powerful means the enemy uses you see that described Aimas. there was practice but this practice was a soulish practice the more you you give life to your soul the more you reinforce the power of the soul to continue to challenge and to fight the emergence, amen, of the inner man. Are you getting my point? The more you do things in a way that does not glorify God, 
the more you project yourself you know the world system will say what an opportunity project yourself that's an opportunity take it you've got the skill you've got the giftings but have you been sent do you have the message this guy was fit but he was not fit for divine purpose that's my point many of us have perfected the act of fitness we are fit to talk we are fit to negotiate we are fit to express ourselves but we are not fit in the act of the things of the spirit that's my point and this is where I want to leave it this morning I want this one to trouble you for the rest of the day so you can begin to engage the, the Aima's order, the Aima's spirit on the inside of you the habitual practice that reinforces amen the nature of the old man is the number one and the most powerful means the, you see is a means the enemy uses to hinder how god wants you amen yes to represent him it's totally different from the way the soul man the outer man wants you to amen to represent yourself and when the enemy sees that there is something on the inside of you, amen, that is still lacking, that is not complete, that is not totally yielded and surrender and submit, submissive, amen, to the principles of God, to the ways of God. I hope you know that the devil knows those, amen, yes, who are who, who have totally yielded themselves, who are totally dead to their own way. I hope you know the devil knows. You know why he knows? Because he's been tempting them. <laughs> because he's been trying them. Whatever they can use to tempt you, to try you, to make you compromise the way of entering the order of the life of God, they will continue to do that thing. They will continue, amen, to come in that order. If they can use women, they will use women. If they can use money, they will use money. If they can use men, they will use men. All right. Whatever the enemy can use, to, whatever the enemy can throw at you, to compromise the way of the spirit the way of the spirit all right things you have not dealt with in your life issues you re, you, you 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 refuse to deal with you deny ah that is a loophole a leeway for the enemy to continue. have you noticed that whenever you are defeated amen the pattern are always the same the patterns are always the same because they have located amen your your weak spots did you hear what I said? I said because they have located what? Everybody has got a weak spot, including me speaking to you. That's why every day I die to that weak spot. You've got to know that weak point. That you, Everybody, you must know. You're, you've got to know your weak point. To say you don't have a weak point is self, is self-delusion, is self-deception. <laughs> it means that you are a potential, yes, tool in the hand of the enemy. You have to know it and you have to continue to yield that path to surrender that path to lay that path on the altar see the enemy is not about stopping you from succeeding in fact it will make you succeed only to bring you down you want to succeed okay we'll help you to succeed you want you want the biggest church ah we will help you you want the biggest uh, uh, business? I will help you. You have to daily be probing your life. You have to be daily, you know, scrutinizing your heart. Try me and search me if there be any iniquity in me. We're talking about feet for divine purpose. I'm talking about men and women who will be carriers. Of the economy of God in this last day, men and women who be bearers, hallelujah, of, 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 of the storehouse of God, who will be custodians, who will be stewards of the things of the spirit. That's what I'm talking about, friends. Don't be fool. This is not a message for everybody, it's for those who are ready to go on with God. This message will get you angry. If, if the truth does not get you angry, 
and you turn your heart to the Lord in repentance, then it's not the truth. It's a double-edged sword. As I'm declaring to you, it's impacting my own life, yes. As I keep saying, I'm the best listener of my message because I know I'm just a, a vessel God is using to speak these things. I go back, I listen to them. I align my heart to the things God has said, amen, in the airwave. <clears throat> Aimas, what a man, what an example. What a message for our generation. I like when the word of God comes as a double-edged sword, sharp. It's not a message you carry and go and preach on Sunday morning in your church. I can imagine all the face of the men of God listening and watching me, squeezing their face. Who does he think he is? I'm, I'm one, hallelujah, speaking as the voice of him, cried in the wilderness, preparing the way of God. This word must burn in your heart until every aspect of your being is laid on the altar, like Isaac. The habitual practice that reinforces the nature of the old man is the number one. And the most powerful means the enemy uses to hinder the new man. Yes, there's life on the inside of you. There's grace. There's power on the inside of you. All of heaven reside in you, but they cannot comfort. Why? Because your spirit, excuse me, your soul is still in charge and God does not impose himself on us. He's giving you free will. You want God to walk in your life and to walk through your life. Lay down your will on the altar. Lay down your strength on the altar. Bring the fat of your life. Lay it down. Make it an offering unto him. Don't eat the fat. You give to God what you think he deserves. Say, can you offer to your governors this sacrifice? I know you are bringing sacrifice to me, but this one you are bringing to me. Do you think I deserve this one that you're bringing to me? You're bringing the lame sacrifice to me and you are telling people that you're sacrificing unto the Lord. Meanwhile, you've kept the best and you've given your governors. The governors are the soul. They are the one ruling you. Then you're bringing this ungodly, dead, lame sacrifice to me. And then you tell people, oh, we, we worship God. We've worshiped, we've what? Oh, who are you fooling? Oh, what a word. Thank you, Father. Thank you for placing your word upon our lips. Thank you, Lord, that we are not deceived. Yes, just by some message that is dead, we are alive. Your word is a life in us. You're speaking to us. Continue to speak. We want this bread evermore so we can continue to adjust. We know the soul is very brutal and we also have to be strong. We have to be determined. We have to continue to receive life so we can deal with this issue once and for all. We're embracing the cross. We refuse, Father, to allow the soul to continue to be at the driver's seat of our life. We're embracing your will. We bring our will. We lay them down. Let, it, let the will, oh God, be strong by the authority and the power of heaven. We pray once again, may your kingdom come. May your will be done, yes, on this earth, in this earth, as it is done in heaven. May your will be done in my life. I represent the earth. May your will, your government, your counsel be established, oh God, in me. I want everything that I am, that I represent, Yes, bring glory and honor unto your name. I want my life, oh God, yes, to bring glory and honor unto your name. I want my life to bring glory and honor unto your name. I want men to see Christ in me, the hope of glory. It's my prayer. And I want everyone watching us, listening. Lord, everyone joining with us journey with us and connecting with us all our loved ones friends disciples oh god yes colleagues and ministry whose hearts are open to truth 
Father, I bring them on the altar. I bind everyone's mind and soul, O oh God, to your obedience, to your will, O oh God. Let your will be done in their life. Over this nation, let your will be established. We proclaim this word over the realm, yes, over the jurisprudence of South Africa. We declare that the will of God, the counsels of God, yes, govern, yes, this constituents. We proclaim this realm, oh God, will serve you. A generation is set aside to honor you, oh God. Their seed will bring glory unto you. We proclaim it, oh God, from here to the nations of the world. Let your kingdom continue to come. Have your way. Take your place. Rule thou in the midst of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. To the nations of the earth, we declare your kingdom come. Thank you once again for new strength. Thank you, Father, for new declarations. Thank you, Lord, for walking upon, yes, our eyes again, that we can see these things. We can rejoice to see your day. Thank you, Lord, that we are seeing the manifestation, yes, of your day upon, yes, this epoch. We honor you, Lamb of God. We take the posture of one willing to lay down, to surrender. Jesus, you are the lion and the lamb. You offered yourself, yes, yes, to be sacrificed. Yet you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You showed us what it means, what it takes to win, hallelujah, for our spirit man to rise up. The spirit must have the nature of the lion and the lamb. Hallelujah. We bless you. We take this order. We, we position ourselves in honor. Yes, of your name. We surrender. We yield ourselves oh God. In obedience, we proclaim. We wear the cloak of humility. We refuse. We reject, oh God, the garment of pride. We undress ourselves from pride. We proclaim and we declare, Christ, you be crowned king over our soul. You said that we'll be sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus, you sanctified yourself. Yes, even from the order of the sanctification the Father already gave you. You said, as he has sent me, as my Father has sent me, so send I you. Thank you, Lord, that we can go forth, yes, in the authority of this same power. Yes, that we are sanctified. That we are sanctified. It means that we are set aside. We've been set apart. Our soul cannot but to yield and to surrender to the government of your spirit we honor you oh God we thank you come Lord Jesus come Jesus take your place Holy Spirit continue to lead us continue to guide us continue to walk in us until the prince of this world comes finds nothing of himself in us hallelujah amen Ah, oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you everyone this morning for joining us. Uh, thank you, uh, my dear sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's a powerful one. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you everyone. Enjoy your day. If you're fasting with us, grace to you, kudos to you. May the Lord continue. <clears throat> To, to grace you, to empower you, amen, to resource you. May you see, yes, the fruits of your spiritual labor. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. Well, hopefully, uh, if we, we have the opportunity again tonight, we'll continue. Amen. And uh, I hope you're already getting blessed. Please share with me if God is touching your life, if there's something that I said, all right, that, you know, hit home and you feel you want to share with me, you know, you can send me a message, or I, I like to read. I, I, I want to, not not because I, I want a feedback, but I also want to share of what event is happening in your own journey. You understand? So, if you think there's something you want to share with me, if you can put it on the Facebook or, uh, or on on WhatsApp, you can send me a messenger. All right, but let's let's communicate god bless you even if i don't say anything back at least i want to read something all right from your end amen god bless you continue to pray continue to seek the face of god have yourself a splendid day god bless you bye-bye